when I hear, try it, you might like it, two things come to mind. You're either parent trying to get your kid to eat asparagus, or you're trying to stick something up your partner's ass. Eighty <laughs> percent of the time, it's one of those two things. It's asparagus or ass. This is especially tricky in relationships. Here's this thing I already enjoy doing. I want you to try it with me. I want you to enjoy this thing I enjoy. So we end up doing things out of love and the spirit of togetherness, but also guilt and fear of missing out. Even things that don't really appeal to us, we get talked into. Try this Thai curry. It's hotter than a Carolina Reaper. <laughs> Sit next to me on the roller coaster. It goes 95 miles an hour. You might like it, or you might vomit. There is no, there's no guarantee with might. If what they want you to do is so great, why aren't you already doing it? I dated a vegetarian once. She never pressured me, but my love for her made me a little quinoa curious. <laughs> Try it, she said. You might like it. And over the next year, I lost so much weight that my doctor thought I had lupus. <laughs> I told the doctor, as soon as we break up, I am right back on Junior Bacon Cheeseburgers. <laughs> a few years ago, different girlfriend, many, many cheeseburgers later, I was convinced to do something I spent most of my life avoiding. I went camping. Now, here's the thing, if you know me at all, I kind of hate nature. It's pretty to look at, but I, I don't really appreciate it. Where other people see purple mountain majesties and fruited plains, I see mosquitoes, I see dirt, I see Lyme disease. I'm also allergic to grass and trees, probably bears, I've never been tested. And I'm being completely honest, I'm not really crazy about heights. But here's the real thing. I'm not comfortable with the idea of shitting outdoors. Not where people picnic. Not where Girl Scouts collect butterflies. This is the kind of savage behavior you'd expect from someone who has never attended a fancy cotillion. I have. I can waltz. I can foxtrot. So some friends proposed a camping trip, and I said I'd think about it, which is essentially polite code for, no, I am absolutely not going camping with you. But my girlfriend said, try it. You might like it. And I felt like it was something I had to do. Everybody was stunned that I'd never been camping, that I had zero interest in sleeping in a zippered bag <laughs> on a pile of rocks <laughs> when it's 30 degrees outside and there's bears. <laughs> I mentioned it to some friends at work and almost immediately there's two office pools going. The first one is, will Scott actually go camping? The other one was, will he make it back alive? And literally, they're taking money on this. They're placing bets. And after two hours, my odds did not look good. <laughs> I was never a Boy Scout. So I guess I've spent most of my life in not being prepared. And by not being prepared, I mean specifically to shit outdoors. <laughs> Everybody in my tribe, we love indoor plumbing. That Yeats poem, the center cannot hold. I feel like that applies to anything less than two-ply toilet paper. My ex-wife heard I was going camping. She called me up, she gave me an, uh, oh really? We were together for 10 years and before we got married we had a conversation about things we just weren't comfortable with. Hers was a well-known, try it, you might like it. That does not involve asparagus. Don't ask, she said, not, not even if it's your birthday. Fine, I said, don't expect me to go camping. So now it was finally time for me to make peace with the wilderness. And I only agreed because it was a quick trip. We leave early sun Saturday morning, drink beer, read books, make dinner, leave Sunday. And the people we were going with, they were born campers. They had all the equipment, so there was really nothing to buy except for alcohol, food, bear spray, and a shit shovel. I didn't even know that was a thing, a shit shovel? but I'd already said yes. So I did some Googling. I'm an amateur camper, 
headed to the Mogollon Rim for the first time, I may as well know what I'm up against. I did a keyword search, and the first thing that popped up was top 10 amateur rim jobs. So I watched that for about 40 minutes, uh, maybe two hours. I felt like I was prepared for anything. We had a caravan. It was five cars long. Two hours on the highway, one hour over rocky, unmarked terrain. My girlfriend drove, and at some point she turned off NPR, and she asked if I wanted to read aloud from one of the books I brought. Sure, I said. I've got Deliverance by James Dickey, <laughs> and Ordeal by Hunger, the story of the Donner Party. She thought about it for a minute, and then she turned the radio back on. Now, the moment we got to the rim, everyone jumped out of their car and, and ran, I mean literally ran, to eat their lunch at the edge of the world. And it's a sheer drop. I hung back at a safe distance, and by that I mean I stayed in the car with my seatbelt on. <laughs> I wanted to be close to the horn in case the bears came. <laughs> and once we started drinking, people kept wandering off to pee in the wilderness. And not everyone was an experienced camper. So what kept happening was this. Somebody, there were five women, two men, somebody would say, I have to pee. And they would walk about 20 feet and say, can you guys see me? <laughs> it's completely flat where we are. You, you can see for miles in every direction. <laughs> They'd walk a few more feet. Can you see me now? And they'd start to crouch and we'd all wave our arms and yell for them to stop. Now eventually I had to pee and I, I know I have it easy. All I have to do is turn around and unzip my pants. So I excused myself from the group and I walked over to the rim. And I looked down and I saw something that chilled my blood. It was a single athletic shoe just a few feet from the edge a single shoe. I started looking around for what, I, I don't know, another shoe, a note, skeletal remains. Whoever used to be in that shoe, maybe it was his first time camping. Maybe it was his last. But nature is all about survival of the fittest. And I'm not proud of this, but I backed away from the rim and I managed to fill that shoe up about halfway. <laughs> I'd had quite a bit to drink at that point. <laughs> then we put our tents together, there were four of them, and it was time to build a fire, which involves finding rocks, stacking them in a circle. And while we ate dinner, the experienced campers all talked about their most thrilling camping adventures. One of them had a story about hypothermia. If you have hypothermia, you need another person's body heat to stay warm. So everyone takes off their clothes, and it's like the 1970s all over again. <laughs> Looking around the campfire, you could tell we were all thinking the same thing. This is not the group of people I would choose to have hypothermia with. <laughs> Eventually, we went to sleep in our tents, but I was restless because the stars were so bright, and every 45 minutes, somebody would walk by our tent to pee. If any of us had hypothermia, they weren't saying anything. And all night, I had crazy dreams. The one dream that wasn't about bears, it was about a guy in our group who couldn't find one of his shoes. <laughs> Maybe I left over by the rim when we were eating lunch, I don't know. It was fitful sleeping out there in nature. And in the morning, I woke up and instinctively felt for my throat to make sure it was intact. And then my girlfriend woke up and she said she'd gotten very cold in the middle of the night and she kept trying to get close to me to warm up and I kept fighting her off. <laughs> I said, I, I probably thought you were a bear. As we joined everybody else for breakfast, I had this whole interior monologue with myself. Was it okay if I didn't shit in the woods? I mean, wasn't camping really about the tent, the sleeping bags, and the s'mores? Hadn't I done that? Or by not shitting in the woods, had I failed to fully embrace the wilderness experience? <laughs> had I let anybody down? Would my girlfriend be disappointed? <laughs> Meanwhile, people kept wandering off to use the bathroom. <laughs> Sorry, the outdoors. And the whole time I'm thinking, I'm good, I got this. I was talking to my lower intestines, like they're Sylvester Stallone in Rocky III, and my morning bowel movement was Mr. T. This is a, this is a real eye of the tiger situation I found myself in. Except, I really didn't have to go. 
So it was clear I was never going to be a born camper. But barring any sudden gastrointestinal distress, I was just going to go to the bathroom when I got home. It was kind of anticlimactic, to be honest. We left a little earlier than our friends, which wasn't a big deal. We just thanked everybody, and we load up the car, and we said goodbye. Nobody called me out for not using the shit shovel. <laughs> a couple of weeks later, I ran into one of the experienced campers, and he asked me if I'd had a good time, and I said, yeah, you know, I, I honestly had. And he asked me if I was thinking about coming camping again, maybe this time for a three-day trip. And I paused for a minute, and I said, I think about it. And he said, really? And I said, no, of course not. <laughs> Thanks very much.